I'm going to show you guys how to get professional painting results uh, when painting and rolling a wall. And a lot of it actually starts with the preparation uh, before you paint. You want to make sure you fill all the holes and get the wall really clean before you do any rolling. Okay, so as far as the paint, you can see we've kind of got just an off-white slash kind of gray color on the main portion of the walls, and then we've got red here. We're looking to lighten it up with kind of a uh, light blue uh, slash grayish color, and uh, go ahead and update and clean all the baseboards and uh, paint those white. We're going to do this before we... Uh, put the laminate flooring down. Alright guys, in order to get professional looking painting results on your wall, um, it starts a lot with the finish, uh, first finishing touches. Um, to fill the holes, um, you want to get a, a good spackle. I prefer to use this because it, uh, it goes on pink and then it dries white when it's ready to sand. Then you want to have a couple different uh, putty knives, a couple different size putty knives, and just grab a little dab, put it over your nail hole like this, and push it into the hole, and then take and smooth it out. Like that. Now what you're doing there is you're removing any excess uh, putty that doesn't really need to be there. A lot of times people kind of build it up and they think, well, I'll sand it down and that's a lot of work and makes a huge mess. It's a lot easier to just fill the hole and then slide it out. And you can see a little bit lower in this wall, there's just a couple scuff marks from when they originally did the sheetrock work. I'm going to go through and I'm going to fill those holes. And just work your way all the way along each wall looking for any little imperfections. Put a little bit of that uh, spackle on there and when it dries white, go ahead and sand it off. Okay, so one of the common areas that you're dealing with is nail holes. Um, when you pull the nail out, it makes a little bit of a chipped area. Um, that's actually a little bit higher than the wall. Before you spackle over the hole, it's a good idea to take your hammer and just kind of give it a little smack. Okay, so now I've taken the hammer and just kind of hammered that in just a little bit. Um, that allowed me to take the spackle and spackle over it and get a smooth surface to paint over. Sandpaper, get a box out of it with these sheets, put on a nice handle like this. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to get a little sanding block to get in some of the uh, tighter areas. But this works really good for the larger areas. your spackle all sanded, um, you want to take and clean the entire wall, all the dust from top to bottom, but specifically um, you want to wipe down all the areas that have all the, the uh, dust from sanding off. Uh, what I do is I take two rags. I take one that's uh, wet, uh, put it in a square like that, and then a dry rag, and then just take and wipe that the dust off. You can also kind of go over the areas that you fill, and this will help remove a little bit of the excess spackle in there as well. You want to do this a couple hours before you're going to paint because you don't want the wall to be wet. But just take it, wipe the wall down with the wet rag first, and then take the dry rag and remove a little bit more dust and basically dry the wall. 
get that all cleaned up and then in a couple hours it'll be ready to paint. All right, so now that you've got your uh, holes filled and the wall clean and ready to paint, it's time to start cutting in all the corners before you roll. You want to get a basic paintbrush like this, something pretty nice, a fine tip on it. And you can use a painter's cup like this with a little handle on it, put your paint in there. Or if you don't have one of those, you can just use a plastic cup. A couple things you want to do besides just cutting in the corners is the spots that you filled holes and you've done a little patching, you want to put a little bit of paint on there. Otherwise, you're going to see these pieces where you patched. Put a little paint over and then take your paintbrush and kind of dab it. Dabbing this keeps it from when you roll it, you won't see the paintbrushes in the middle of your wall. Otherwise, those paintbrushes will kind of stand out and give an uneven texture to your wall. Once you've gone through and you've painted over all your patch spots, you want to go through and cut in all your corners. And over this dark colored wall, you either want to put a primer on it first and then paint with the paint. Where this is a, a primer and paint in one, we'll probably just have to do two coats because of the darker color is going to show through the first coat a little bit. Okay, now it's time to roll your wall. Um, one of the value valuable tips that I've learned over the years is whenever you're rolling a wall, sometimes you get st stopping in the middle of a project and uh, rather than throw away your, your roller or have to take time to clean it, you can take a, a roller that's been, that you've used for painting and actually just put it in a plastic bag. This roller has been in a plastic bag for about seven days and it's still okay to use it. So rather than take the time to clean it, I've got a, a roller ready to use. Okay, so when rolling a wall, you want to put a fair amount of paint on your roller and apply it to the wall. You don't have to worry about it being real smooth on your first application. Just go through and apply the paint fairly thick to the wall, not so thick that it creates a bunch of runs. Go through and apply just an even coat of the paint. At this point, don't worry about smoothing it out and go over about one, two, maybe even three rollers applying the plant paint. The biggest mistake I see people do is they just kind of do this. The problem with doing that is that creates uneven paint marks along your wall. And you'll kind of see that variation in paint color and you want to go through and just apply the paint to the wall first. and then take and go back and smooth the paint back out. It's really important that you go the same direction from the top all the way to the bottom. What you're doing there is you're smoothing the paint out and giving the paint a texture on the wall. This gives a real smooth, even looking texture to your entire wall. And you won't see a bunch of roller lines if you do it this way. Sometimes you gotta go back over it. 
you see any spots that have any run marks just to smooth the paint out. Then one thing you want to avoid doing is going this direction down and then this direction up. You'll actually see separate lines going through. You want to stay smoothing the paint out in the same direction each time. Okay, another mistake I see people make is as the paint starts to dry, you see kind of lines and different colorations and people have a tendency to try to go through and smooth that out or get more of a consistent color and they'll actually do more harm than good it'll they'll see you'll see those marks where you've gone through and, and try to smooth it out so basically after you've done your your three roller marks you've applied the paint you've smoothed it out don't go back and smooth out the paint again just let it do its thing and it'll dry nice and even throughout the whole entire right, wall. Steve that way, Brian. Thanks for watching this video on how to paint this uh, wall here. I think the project turned out really great. Uh, it's a great color. Uh, looks real smooth. We've got the trim repainted. Uh, please uh, like the video, make some comments, and uh, subscribe to my channel.